It's cold out, so let's make this quick. Sunday gun day. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and today we are taking a look at the currently most requested firearm platform on this channel, the AK-47. Now before we get into this I need to give a huge shout out to all of those who sponsored this video over on Patreon. The Patreon page just went through some big changes however there's still a handful of awesome subs out there who are a part of it and without for you guys this video would not be happening right now. The way it worked is I took their suggestions, I created a poll, and then let them decide on what firearm to feature on this channel. Doing this allows me to create this video without paying for it out of my pockets like I do for the rest of my content. As most of you probably know, it is not cheap to shoot new guns every single weekend. And on top of that, it's directly in line with what you guys want to see. So again, huge thanks to all the patrons out there for making this video happen. Now, let's get into this. I'm gonna start off by putting this out there right away. I'm an AR guy, at least for now anyway. I've shot AKs in the past, but I've never owned one myself, so when I was in the market for one, it was a little bit daunting. There are so many different manufacturers and variants of these rifles out there, and it's obvious that people who are heavily invested in AKs are very opinionated about them, about what's good and what's not. So all of the info and people's opinions out there made the buying decision a little bit difficult. After doing my own research and deciding on which option would be best for me and my personal preferences, I landed on the Sentry Arms RAS-47. The RAS-47 is a gas-operated semi-automatic rifle chambered in good old 7.62x39. The first thing that drew me to this particular AK is that it's completely manufactured in the United States of America. It features a stamped receiver with a side rail scope mount, standard AK-47 sights, and a 16.5 inch barrel with slant brake, all coated in a black nitride finish. The second thing that caught my attention is that this is actually an MOE variant of a classic AK design. Typically when someone hears AK, they're thinking about a wooden stock and wooden handguard, however this is completely decked out in polymer. I'm a big fan of Magpul and all the products that they offer, so this rifle coming from the factory with an MOE stock, grip, handguard, and a 30 round PMAG is a huge plus. And then the thing that really sealed the deal for me is that this whole package can be had for around $550 to $600, and that's a steal in my opinion. I inquired about this exact model and received it within the same week thanks to my friends down at Panda Tactical and Farnet Military Arms. It was then shipped directly to my local FFL Schuylkill Gunworks, another huge supporter of this channel, so I'll be leaving links to all of their sites in the description down below. So the gun's made in America, it looks great in my opinion, but how does it shoot? Is it gonna turn me into an AK guy? We're about to find out. Alright, first mag impressions on the Sentry Arms RAS 47. Just for reference, I was shooting some Wolf 123 grain steel case. I guess I'll start with the ergonomics and how this thing feels in my hands, and comparing it to an AR-15, this is a lot more aggressive. The grip and handguard are really nice, I put Magpul stuff on pretty much all of my guns. The stock is not adjustable unless you're going to switch out the butt pad, so it's just one length of pull, which I'm okay with. When I put this thing in my shoulder, you have to get your cheek really low to get a nice sight picture, and I think it feels more aggressive and almost violent because the action is riding right in line with your sight. On an AR, it's more internalized and your face sits a little bit higher than where the action is moving, but the AK, your face is right here, right in the action. That's one thing that I actually forgot about AKs. I really haven't shot one of these rifles in like three or four years now. So the Magpul parts make the ergos on this thing feel right at home. One thing that I like about ARs, especially with small handguards, is that you can do a thumb over grip, which you can't really do with this. Your thumb gets right in the line of the sights. That's no problem though. Place your hand literally anywhere else and you'll be fine. 
Another good thing about these polymer pieces is that it cuts down on weight a little bit. This is also a stamped receiver, so that cuts down on weight a little bit, but compared to ARs, again, this is pretty heavy for a rifle. One feature that's kind of nice on the side here is this safety cutout. Not every AK has this, but it is a nice little feature because you can keep the chamber open. Now the trigger on this thing is a little hard to give my opinion on because I am wearing gloves. It's like 25 degrees out here right now. This thing is rocking Sentry Arms Rack 1 single stage trigger, but I'll save my opinions on that for the final thoughts. I still have a lot more ammo left, so let's get back to shooting this thing. Alright, that was 200 rounds through the Sentry Arms RAS 47. I know I broke my 100 round rule, but this thing's just a blast to shoot. Now for my personal opinions on this rifle and AKs in general. I've always wanted an AK-47 in my personal collection, especially after I got my new safe. I loaded a majority of the guns that I own into it and I was like, man, this thing really isn't complete without an AK-47 in it. So my personal use of owning this gun is basically just for fun to bring out here on the range and to have some fun with. Let's start by talking about this single stage trigger. Like I mentioned before, this is their Rack 1 single stage trigger as opposed to a double stage trigger. What that means in layman's terms is that it's all one motion until the gun goes off as opposed to two motions. For a two stage trigger like you'll find on most AR-15s or any handgun today, you have the first part which is the take up. You'll hit a defined wall where it gets a little bit harder. That allows you to prep the trigger so you have a little bit better of an idea of when it's gonna go off. And then you pull it the rest of the way to the break. For a single stage trigger like this, it's all one motion, there's no defined wall, so when the gun goes off, it almost surprises you. Let's see if you can make this out. So it's one full range of motion, and then the gun fires somewhere in the middle there. The reset, tactile and audible like you would expect, and then you're right back in that single motion. Now when you do take your time with this trigger, like I was when I was sitting on the bench over there, you can actually get it to a point where it almost feels like a two-stage trigger. It's gonna be a lot easier if I take my gloves off to do this and to show you. My hands are kind of numb right now, but if you can get a good feeling on the trigger and pull it slow enough, you can almost feel a wall right here in the middle. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up. Now when I'm at that wall, it is a really light trigger pull. Overall, I believe it's supposed to be rated at about four and a half pounds, but if you can pull it back and feel that wall, it's much, much lighter feeling than that. Here it is again. Real carefully back to the wall. Right there, it stopped. And then it goes off. 
Now that is a little tricky to do, but it does have that feeling. The thing is though, if you're shooting an AK-47, chances are you're not really shooting it for accuracy. The whole point of a two-stage trigger is so that you can anticipate the shot and then hopefully keep yourself a little bit more accurate. But if I'm shooting a carbine and I want it to be accurate, I'm definitely gonna lean towards the AR because to be honest, these things aren't very accurate. Now that's a statement where a lot of the AK guys are like, Bull fucking shit, I can shoot a quarter off a table at half a mile. While that may be true, this is something that you almost have to agree with. The AK-47, as it was designed, was built for battle. It's not refined or precise like an AR. The build quality of everything, the stamped parts, just the action itself. It's such a ruggedized feeling, like I could bury this thing in snow, put some mud inside of it, slam it off a couple of these rocks over here and it's still gonna shoot reliably every time. Granted, this gun is brand new and you did see its first couple of shots, but the feeling that an AK gives you is that you can beat the hell out of it and it's gonna keep on ticking. I don't really wanna do that right now, just completely thrash this thing, but the patrons did pay for it, so if you guys want to see me beat the hell out of this thing, you'll have to let me know. Another thing to note real quick is that the MOE stock and grip do have little storage compartments, both in the top of the stock here, and then underneath the grip. The thing is, the polymer parts generally keep it lighter than wooden parts, and the stamp receiver generally lighter than a milled receiver. But this thing really isn't the lightest to begin with. Yeah, for an AK, it's pretty light. But if you have these things, I really wouldn't recommend putting anything in there. One thing that I would like to do to make this gun a little bit easier to shoot would be to put an optic on top, maybe some sort of red dot. There's really nothing wrong with the stock sights. I would like to get a little bit more trigger time on this thing to get it zeroed in properly. But in my opinion, everything shoots a little bit better for me if I have a red dot on top. So I guess that's gonna be it for my thoughts on the Sentry Arms RAS 47, but before you guys go, I'd like to give one last shout out to all the patrons. It's really all your support that made this video happen in the first place, and since you chose the AK as the first Patreon-sponsored gun, this thing really holds special meaning to me now, and it's always gonna have a spot at home in the safe. If I ever run into any of you at the range sometime, you are more than welcome to shoot the hell out of this thing. If you would like to be a part of the group who gets behind the scenes photos, early access to videos, direct contact with me, or you just wanna pick the next gun to be featured here on Sunday Gun Day, I will leave a link to the Patreon in the description down below. Other than that, the best way to support the channel is to just keep watching, liking, and sharing these videos with your friends. That being said, if you are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe, I make new videos every week, and that's gonna be all for today. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.